ladies and gentlemen, you're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. It's a beautiful day here in Baltimore, and it is indeed time for baseball as the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. Tonight, it's the New York Yankees against the Baltimore Orioles in the first game of a three-game set from Oriole Park at Camden Yards in Baltimore, Maryland. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Yankees baseball along with Ken Singleton. I'm Michael Kay. Well, the Yankees had a day off yesterday, and they had to regroup because they had their seven-game winning streak snapped on Wednesday. But they also suffered some big-time injuries, which kind of reshaped the roster. So let's take a look at some of the moves they had to make. Andrew Miller was put on the 15-day DL with a strained forearm, so Dylan Patances is now the closer. Jose Perello was optioned to AAA. Chris Martin was recalled from Scranton. Remember, he was on the DL and then sent down to AAA. And the newest Yankee is Mason Williams. He was recalled from Scranton, and he is in the starting lineup, Kenny. He's playing center field. Now, the last Williams that the Yankees had in center field just had his number retired. That's Bernie Williams. Well, Mason Williams has a way to go yet, but he showed some signs in spring training. Swinging the bat very well. He hit over 300 in spring training with the Yankees, and he continued to hit well during the minor league season. Once again, a 300 hitter to go with the rest of his tools, speed, and defensive ability. Now let's take a look at tonight's pitching matchup brought to you by People's United Bank N.A. See what know-how can do for you. Ubaldo Jimenez is going to get the start for the O's. He's having a bounce back season 3-3 three and three with a 3.02. And Michael Pineda skipped over one start to give him some extra rest. 7-2, 3.33. He's back on the mound for the Yankees to start this three-game set. Well, the Yankees are facing a red-hot Orioles team. They just swept the Boston Red Sox. They've won four in a row. The Yankees are doing pretty well as well. Big battle in the East. Lineups. First pitch. Baseball. Next on Yes. Radiation Centers of New York. When it comes to fighting cancer, precision is everything. Call 844-2-RADIATION-DOC. By Heroes Charge, the hit mobile game available on the App Store and Google Play. Download now by TristateBuick.com and by Blimpy. Try one of the new oven-fired artisan flatbread sandwiches. Blimpy, America's sub shop. We are ready for baseball here in Baltimore. It should be a good three-game set. The Orioles seem to have uh, worked out some of their issues as they creep closer to a uh, 500 record with a four-game winning streak. And the New York Yankees will try to get back to their winning ways after having their seven-game streak snapped on Wednesday. Let's take a look at the Yankee lineup put together by Joe Girardi. It's presented by Lexus. The left fielder is Brett Gardner. He's going to lead off batting second and playing third base is Chase Headley. 
the DH, Alex Rodriguez. He's going to bat third. Cleaning up first baseman, Mark Teixeira. Brian McCann will catch. He'll bat fifth, batting sixth. Playing right field, Carlos Beltran. D.D. Gregorius, the shortstop, will bat seventh. Batting eighth, playing second base, Stephen Drew. And making his major league debut, the center fielder, Mason Williams, bats ninth. On the mound for the Baltimore Orioles, 31-year-old right-hander, Ubaldo Jimenez, who gets the start tonight in the opening game of this series. Two and four in his career against New York Yankees. There are his numbers for the season. This will be his 12th start. Three and three, 500 record on the mound in the win and loss column. Pretty good ERA, 3.02. You can see less than a hit per inning. The walks have always been a problem for him. And let's check out our pitcher scatter report brought to you by your tribe, Honda Dealers. Up until 2010, there had been no such thing as a Rocky no-hitter. Well, Baldo Jimenez did pitch a no-hitter for the Colorado Rockies against the Atlanta Braves that year, the first one in Rockies history. And this year for the Baltimore Orioles, he's pitched very well. 2.06 ERA in this home ballpark of Camden Yards. But his last win was May 11th. He's had, he's had four straight no decisions. Let's take a look at the Orioles defense behind him and as it's brought to you by Geico. You've got Reinhold in left, Jones in center, and Snyder over in right. Infield, Machado, Hardy, Flaherty, and Davis third to first. Caleb Joseph is behind the plate. And on the mound is Kenny just to tell Ubalo Jimenez. Yankees 33 and 26. As we are ready to start the game here at Camden Yards. Weekend set, and then the Yankees move on to Miami for two games against the Marlins. Gardner's ready. Jimenez is ready. And let's do it here in Baltimore. The first pitch is a strike, and we're underway. Paul Emmel is the home plate umpire. The crew chief, Jerry Mills, at first. Andy Fletcher at second. Jordan Baker is over at third. When you look at Jimenez, his style has changed drastically over the years. Pitching coach Dave Wallace here in Baltimore has uh, got him throwing more of a compact delivery. He used to bring his hands back over his head and he had a problem with control. So they tried to uh, compact his delivery. His control has improved somewhat. But from time to time he goes he falls off the tracks. You can see he doesn't bring the arms way over his head as he used to. Line drive, base hit over the leaping try of Flaherty, and Gardner's on with a leadoff single. And with that base hit, Brett Gardner now has a six-game hitting streak. That one just got over the glove of Flaherty at second base. He might have got a little leather on it, but he couldn't flag it down. Hit right on the nose. Flaherty up, but can't come down with it. The Yankees have the leadoff man on. Now you can run because uh, Caleb Joseph has thrown out just six of 28 attempted base stealers. And here's Headley. And a strike. Headley, a little bit of a slump. Two hits in his last 18 at bats. His average at 245. Remember the Yankees coming in here when Camden Yards opens. Hard to believe it was over 20 years ago. But the, you know, the Yankees thinking this is a good hitting ballpark. It has proved to be over the years. And when you come in here and you're sitting on 99 home runs like Headley. You kind of a feeling you might get one this weekend and reach that magic number of 100 for your career. Very friendly to the gaps here at Camden Yards. Trying to keep Gardner close. Gardner tied for second in the American League in stolen bases with 14. Jose Altuve, there's that name again. He leads. Altuve with the Astros. Missed outside. It's strange. The Orioles do not hand out many long term contracts to pitchers, but they did that to Jimenez, yeah. and he really hasn't lived up to it at all. Yeah, he struggled. In fact, they took him out of rotation uh, last year. They. Signed him to a long term deal. Came over from the Cleveland Indians. You know, and you're right, Michael. You think back, they, they had Mike Messina at one time. 
And how, how often do you let a homegrown great pitcher like that go to a division rival? Oh my goodness, they kind of know. They, he knows that he kind of knew where he's going to end up. Mm -hmm. Either Boston or New York. And they have definitely always flirted with pitchers and then give them physicals and then they find something and they, they say, no, we're not going to do it. Runner goes. That one is driven to right field. It's a base hit. It's going to go to the wall on one hop. Let's see if Gardner can score. Snyder Fields quickly gets it in. They'll hold Gardner at third and they will hold Headley to a single. Nice play in right field by Travis Snyder. Yeah, Headley had his hitting streak broken on Wednesday at Yankee Stadium. He starts a new one tonight with a line drive double off the wall. Now, the reason why Gardner did not score, when this ball comes off the wall, it comes directly to Snyder. Right to him. He steps right into it. If that ball gets around him any way, shape, or form, Gardner would have scored. But instead, the Yankees have second and third and nobody out. And I was going to bring up A Rod, and Kenny mentioned. Good hitters like to hit in this ballpark. A-Rod has 32 home runs at Camden Yards. By far the most by any visiting player. Yeah, Big Poppy hit here, hit one here last night. That was his 24th. And there's a strike. Now Alex has had a fairly consistent season so far. You see his numbers lifetime here. But he's in a little bit of a slide. Not, not anything extraordinary. One hit and 13 at bats. His average has gone down to 270. Now they're playing for the double play and they'll give up the run. Take the two outs. Yeah, Snyder made a good play to get the ball back in and keep the runners on the corners. Count one and two. Menace features a, a pretty good fastball, breaking ball, and a splitter. And that looked like the splitter right there. That kind of hung up there, though. Every time Alex drives in a run, he sets a new American League record. Check the swing on the high fastball. And Jerry Meals agrees. We take another look. Side view. Nah, he didn't go. First and third. Nobody out. Just underway. The 2 2. Just got a piece. Yeah. Well, Hank Aaron with 2297 rubies number one all time in Major League history and Alex is next at 1998 which was probably the Yankees best season. He's <laughs> thinking the same thing. <laughs> 125 and 50. Think about it. When you're coming up on 2,000 runs batted in, and nobody else but uh, one other player in the history of the game has done it. He's also coming up on 3,000 hits. Yeah, that's milestone after milestone. Alex needs eight hits to get to 3,000. back now he's gonna have to have a really good weekend here to get to that number now you would think it would be poetic if Alex who's from Miami would get the hit yeah. against the Marlins but he's probably gonna get two at bats at the most because they don't put him in the field and there's no DH in the National League City all those names you see above him are in the Hall of Fame check swing and Alex works a walk, and that will load the bases. All right, let's look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow T. It's always hot here in Baltimore, 89 degrees, 6 miles per hour, not much wind, and humidity 49%. It's partly cloudy. There's a slight chance 
of thunderstorms. Well, it, it was obvious you weren't here in January. <laughs> A lot of snow. Huh? <laughs> well, it, it was cold. Let's put it that way. So bases loaded for Mark to share. High pop up. Left side. Hardy will make the catch for the first down. So to share with 45 ribbies can't cash in with the bases loaded. You know what was unusual about that at bat because the as we all know usually takes the first pitch. But there's a chance to drive in some runs. He saw something he liked and popped it up. Yeah that was right there for the taking and he got underneath and you can see his reaction. He knows he should have hit that one a lot better. Here's Brian McCann. Four game hitting streak, seven hits and 17 at bats. He's got 38 ribbies. Bases loaded, one out. Well, this is sort of a uh, bounce back year for McCann, who's off to a much better start than he was last year. Michael mentioned the 38 ribbies. That puts him in the top 10 in the American League. Great numbers, lifetime with the bases loaded. You've taught me, Kenny, that if you come up with the bases loaded and you realize that the pitcher's in trouble and you're not, yeah. you're probably more successful. Yeah, you, you can't let the moment get bigger than the, the situation. You want to get up there and just be calm. The calm hitters are the ones who usually get the job done. And McCann's a veteran. He's been around the block. He showed his... Uh, Great numbers with the bases loaded. He's also been the Yankees' best hitter with runners in scoring position. And he's got a prime time situation right here. You saw those numbers the last 14 games. He's been red hot. One, two. Swing and a foul tip into the glove of Joseph. And Evaldo Jimenez is one out away from working out of a bases loaded, nobody out jam. Jimenez goes upstairs just underneath the hands. Fastball that tails back over the plate. Foul tipped. And strike three. So Please. two of the top run producers for the Yankees do not come through. He's thrown 22 pitches so far. And now he has to deal with Carlos Beltran, the sixth hitter in the Yankee order. And a strike to Beltran. Three infielders on the right side for Beltron. He's been better in his last 25 games than he was in his first 24. I mean, better by a lot. His April was not the type of April you write home about. Well, the thing about it, though, with two outs now, the Orioles can actually play the shift. They didn't do it with McCann up in a double play situation. Goes with the fastball and the count two and two. So bases loaded, two balls, two strikes, two outs for the Yankees here in the top of the first inning. Gardner's at third, Headley at second, and A Rod is at first. The 2 2. High pop up, shallow right. Snyder is there, and the Yankees waste a golden opportunity. Base is loaded, nobody out, and they don't score. Yankees nothing. O's coming to bat.
The O's starting lineup, that's going to face Michael Pineda. Manny Machado, the third baseman, leads off. Jimmy Paredes, DH, will bat second. Hitting third, playing center field, Adam Jones. Chris Davis at first base cleans up. The number five hitter is the shortstop, J.J. Hardy. Travis Snyder in right field will bat sixth. Batting seventh and playing left field, Nolan Reimold. Ryan Flaherty at second base is going to bat eighth and batting ninth and catching Caleb Joseph. Big Mike, Michael Pineda, you can see him there taking his final warm-up tosses for the bottom of the first inning. He's been good against Baltimore Orioles, 3-0 in his career against Baltimore, including two wins this year. And his numbers have been outstanding. Let's check out the pitcher scouting report brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. He was on a staycation. The Yankees actually skipped him a, a turn to manage his innings going forth uh, for the remainder of the season. Those numbers 13 and a third innings pitch no walks 25 strikeouts. That's what he's done against the Baltimore Orioles this year and laurels to Hardy. There's one Orioles been able to hit him. And that's uh, J.J. Hardy six for 11 with three home runs. Did you come up with that laurels to Hardy. I did that this morning. I did it last night. Outstanding. You know I write all of these things. That might be one of the great lines ever. I mean, and you're telling me that you do it. There's a couple more guys that don't. <laughs> <laughs> the 1-0. 2-0. You know what? Maybe I should write the best of. That's the best of. You don't even have to choose. There, there's others. Laurels to Hardy. Wow. Now 3 and 0 to Machado. Be interesting to watch and see how the uh, time off affected Pinedo although you know he worked in between. Threw on the side a couple of times. And he walked Machado. First Baltimore hitter he's walked this year. Now let's take a look at the uh, the Yankees defense behind Pineda and it's presented by Geico. In the outfield Gardner. Mason Williams who's supposedly outstanding with the glove in center field. Carlos Beltran at right infield Headley. Gregorius Drew into share third to first McCann behind the plate and Pineda on the mound. You know when you look at what the Yankees did with um, Michael Pineda and you mentioned the staycation. It makes sense because if he kept pitching every five days, that one is looped into left field. It's a base hit. So Paredes picks up a single and first and second for the Orioles. Nobody out. Kenny, he would have had 220 innings at the end of the year. And last year, he pitched just over 70 innings, which he's at right now. So they'd like to keep him at about 180. But then there's the flip side. In his career, he's had 10 starts. With at least six days of rest. And obviously he's on that right now. One and four, four point one five. Yeah, it's you know, pitchers and you've heard David Cohn say this and Al Leiter say it, they are creatures of habit. Yep. They are used to a certain training regiment in between starts, and all of a sudden they're thrown off. And at first Pineda wasn't very happy with the decision to, you know, go on that staycation. But then he realized, you know, this is the big picture situation. They don't want him throwing two hundred and twenty innings. Here's Adam Jones. 13 hits and 31 at bats in his last eight games, having a very good season again, hitting 311. And here's our Chrysler hitter scout reported. It's Adam Jones. Right now, as Michael said, he's got a thing going on. He's hitting 342 in the month of June. They call him Mr. Jones here in Baltimore, and that's why he's got a thing going on. He was. Riding high in April, hitting 400, led the American League, but then he's kind of shot down in May, hit 239. And Frank Robinson, he's creeping up on Frank Robinson in home runs on the all time list. And anytime you can get near Frank Robinson in anything, that's a good thing. Fly ball, right center. Mason Williams on the run. And he gets his first big league put out, fires the second, good arm. As Machado moves to third. And 
McKinney, that was not a difficult play, but the scouting report we get on Williams, yeah. he can go get it with anybody out in center field. Yeah, that's what we heard in spring training that uh, the Yankees are kind of waiting for his offensive tools to catch up to his defensive ability. He's got the speed, he's got the range, and as you said, he gets his ball back into second base uh, pretty well. And this year in the minor leagues, he's hit. Over 300 at Trenton, over 300. That's Grant Wilkesbury. So double A and triple A. Here's Chris Davis. Count one and zero. We're about at the third of the way through the season. A little bit more than that. And Chris Davis has 78 strikeouts. Are you thinking 240? 230? It's a lot of wind. <laughs> Driven to right field, that goal is going to be off the base of the wall. Machado scores. Paredes goes to third. It's an RBI single off the wall for Chris Davis, and the O's are on the board. It's one nothing. The leadoff walk comes in to score. We've seen a couple of singles off the uh, scoreboard in right field. Chris Davis gets something in the middle of the plate. He's got a long swing, but this time it connects. And the Orioles take a 1 0 lead here in the first inning. Thirty fourth ribby for Davis, and that's going to bring up J.J. Hardy. And a strike. This is the hitter that gives uh, Pineda the most problems in the Oriole lineup. The game that Pineda had against Baltimore, where he struck out 16 and was just on fire that day up at Yankee Stadium. Laurel. Uh, Hardy had a home run off it. Oh, and two. Bunched up in the American League East, the Yankees in first place, Tampa Bay two games behind. Toronto three, Baltimore four, Boston seven. And it's time for the Lowe's never stop improving standing. So four wins in a row for the O's, eight wins in a row for the Blue Jays, and the Red Sox. Are having a tough go of it. And the Rays somehow continue to hang. Boston leads Toronto 2 0, bottom of the first inning. And it's in Boston. Let's count 2 and 2. And the Red Sox, as Michael told you, were swept here by the Orioles. Things are getting a little testy on the Boston side of things. The owner made a um, trip to the field today doing batting practice. Usually not a good thing. John Henry showed up, but no news came out of it. Swing and a miss. Got him. big strikeout for Pineda against the guy who has haunted him for the second out. Let's see what he goes with here. He goes with the slider, and you can see Hardy, who's a good high ball hitter, that was down in the strike zone over the top of the swing, and that's out number two. All right, here's Travis Snyder. Kind of a wave at that pitch. Such a difference between 0 1 and 1 0 for both of these pitchers. If Pineda gets the first strike on you, opponents at 174 against him. Two, I'll check that 214. Uh, if he throws a, a first pitch ball, Kenny, opponents hit 351 against him. Yeah, what happens is you get into more predictable pitches and you can look for fastballs as hitters. You have to come back with a strike, maybe catch too much of the plate. When you get that 0 1, hitters immediately are on the defensive. 
Jimenez 0-1, 174, 1-0, 322. And the major league average will tell you how dominant that is. 0-1, 224, 1-0, 264. So these guys really take advantage of an 0-1 count. Now two and one. Three and one. Made his change up. Not quite the bite. At least on that one. But that's a pitch that sometimes comes and goes during the course of the game. You get a better feel for it as the game goes along. Three one. Had a good feel for that one. Came right back with it. We talked about the predictability. It looked uh, more like a slider. That was a predictable fastball count. Snyder was looking for it, didn't get it. Runner goes. Ground ball to first. To Sharon's right there. All things considered, Pineda escapes relatively unscathed. He gives up a run on two hits, two runners left. One nothing. Orioles going to the second. Toyota is the official hybrid vehicle of the Yankees. This question is asked a lot. We asked it to you. Which American League East team is currently the biggest threat to the first place Yankees and why? And Jeremy Goldstein 4 says the Orioles are a big threat. You never know when they're going to go on a big winning streak. That team has lots of weapons. Follow Yes Network and tweet us your responses using hashtag Yankees Camry Hybrid to keep the conversation going. Well, they won the American League East last year. Yeah, this is about the time of year when Baltimore took off. Here's D.D. Gregorius. The, the thing about it, though, Michael, they're not playing nearly as well on the road as they did last year. And they're, they're having road issues. Ground ball and off the glove of a diving Davis out to Flaherty covering is Jimenez. Really nice play by the O's. You score that 3 4 1. Nice play by Davis to stop it from going into right field and heads up by Jimenez to cover on a throw by Flaherty. Yeah, the Orioles defense has really been on point these last few games. They made some outstanding plays in the Red Sox series. 
before the Yankees came to town. This is more of a pinball type play. 3 4 1. The men is getting over to cover just ahead of Gregorius at first base. The Orioles have actually taken over the league lead as far as the fewest errors. It was Tampa Bay for most of the season. Now the Orioles have stepped it up defensively. They hadn't made very many errors lately, and they have the fewest errors in the league. Stephen Drew takes inside. On deck is young Mason Williams, and you wonder what's going through his mind right now. Well, he told me he got the call yesterday. Uh, Dave Miley, the manager, while they were on the bus from Buffalo to Scranton, Wilkesbury. And he he said he couldn't wait to get off that bus. They had two more hours to go, and he had to pack up and make his way to uh, Baltimore today. And when you think about it, Michael, when Jacoby Ellsbury was injured, everybody the Yankees have called up in succession have done a pretty good job. Slade Heathcott before he was injured. Ramon Flores also did a good job, and now Mason Williams gets a turn. Joseph could not hold on to the foul ball. Two and two. You know that the Orioles uh, everyday catcher Matt Weeders yeah. catches the most foul tips on strike three of any catcher in baseball. Not tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> he's not back there. The two two. And one reason he's not back there he caught last night against the Red Sox and coming back from uh, Tommy John uh, Baltimore the Orioles do not feel that he's ready to play back catch back to back games. Now when you ask Weeders why he says I really don't know he said the only thing I can think of, I keep the glove loose and I let the ball close uh -huh. the uh, glove. Brian McCann by the way is right behind him. Here's the three two to Drew. Tap back to Jimenez. Two outs and here comes Mason Williams. Mason Williams former fourth round pick of the Yankees. Um, kind of meandered through the uh, the system and. The Yankees were a little worried about his motor. Did he have the desire and the drive to be a major leaguer? And they had to make a decision on whether or not to put him on the 40 man roster. And it was a debate. They decided to do it. And according to people in the organization, a light went off this spring. And you saw the numbers that we just showed you there hitting over 300 at double A and then triple A. And here he is in the big leagues. The light went on. There's a the strike. His mom and dad are here in the ballpark. He's from Florida. You know, and with the outfield prospects in the Yankee system producing and getting to the major leagues, at least a couple of them this year, and he was a teammate of Aaron Judge's down in Trenton for a while. So maybe the light went on because he didn't want to get left behind. I think that's his younger brother with the uh, cell phone camera there. It's a family affair when you get up here. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole family's with you. They took the rides with you, drove you places, and they kind of got called up to the big leagues today as well. Grounded foul. You think about it, this is something you've probably thought about your whole life. You know, first at bat in the major leagues, your knees are knocking a little bit. Swing and a miss. So Mason Williams goes down on strikes in his first big league at bat. As the Yankees go down in order, we go to the bottom of the second. One nothing O's.
Fewer Medical Center, Inspired Medicine. This one's a tough one for the Yankees. Andrew Miller was so good. We were wondering during Wednesday's game, why was it Batances pitching in the eighth? And how come Miller never got up? Well, we find out he had a strained forearm. Uh, look at the numbers that he had. 0-1, 1.03, 17 saves and 17 opportunities. 10 walks and 43 strikeouts in 26 in the third innings. And it's going to be more than two weeks because he's shut down for two weeks. And then he's got to build it back up. It doesn't take as long as it does a starter because he's got to build it back up to about 25 pitches. But he could be out close to a month. You know, and of course, there's a, a ripple effect in the bullpen. Who's going to take over the eighth inning with uh, Dylan Francis moving to the closing role? Should be interesting to see how Joe Girardi and Larry Rothschild play this one. One nothing. Oh, Nolan Reimold is a, a good story for the Orioles. A couple of years ago, made a diving catch or an attempt at a catch in the stands in Chicago. And heard a disc in his neck. Had surgery. Really hasn't played that much. Ended up getting released by the Orioles. Mm -hmm. And uh, always wanted to play here. And got back here this year, and, and he's fully healthy. You know, not one surgery, but two surgeries on his neck. He played for Toronto a little bit, became a free agent, and the Orioles signed him to a minor league deal. And uh, he came to spring training, looked pretty good, played well in AAA, and now he's back. And now he's back in the dugout. Strikeout of Reimold, one down. But the Orioles, you're right, Michael, they've always liked his tools. He's got good speed. Good outfielder. He's got some power. You know, Buck Showalter, to the manager of the O's, and you know, Dan Duquette, the GM, they talk about the way they do business. They've got to hit on those sort of players. They're going to take chances on people, have them prove themselves, and that's how they stay afloat. That's how they continue to compete by by hitting on some of those uh, yeah. Long shots. Good example is Steve Pierce, who yep. played so well for them last year, not so much this year. Ground ball to first, nice hop there for Teixeira. And here's the Orioles team scouting report brought to you by Mohegan Sun, full of action, full of possibilities, full of life. The Orioles outfield defense lately has been outstanding. They got 20 outfield assists, that's the most in the major leagues, and leaving the yard. And they've played 31 home games. There's only been four games here this year where neither team had a home run. So the ball flies out of here. And as Michael said, Matt Wieters has returned. Not only is he a good hitter, former gold glove catcher, an all-star, but he can really help the pitching staff and guide them through ball games. And I think that's his biggest strength for this team. Caleb Joseph takes pitch outside, 1-0. Oh. This is a hitter-friendly ballpark. Now the absence of Weeders, who uh, is going to take a while before Weeders is an everyday player again. There's the uh, former Georgia Tech three-time All-American Caleb Joseph gets the job and gets a fly ball to right field. Beltron's there, and Pineda works a one-two-three inning here in the second. We're going to the third in Charm City. It's one nothing. Orioles lead.
The New York Yankees may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. That is for Henry. Henry. Yeah. Guarding the guarding the harbor of Baltimore back in the 1812. Francis Scott Key, of course, wrote the uh, Star Spangled Banner. Rockets red glare, the bombs were bursting in air, but they held the city. Of course, uh, you know, all those roads weren't there then, so the British couldn't get into downtown as easy as they do now. Or some people will tell you that it's still hard to get into downtown with all the traffic. Gardner with a single right in the first inning. The 1-1 one -one count. Look out. Did that get him? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I think he got two for the price of one. Gardner got hit, and so did Caleb Joseph. The target's in, but this is a little too far right off the kneecap. Well, Gardner is going to be on for the second time tonight. And you can see the ball got a piece of Caleb Joseph as well. The only one it missed was home plate umpire Paul Emmel. It's very rare to get three for the price of one. Chase Headley singled off the wall and right in the first inning. And when you look at the defensive posture of the outfielders here and Travis Snyder and particularly in right field the right fielders play well off the line. There's a lot of room between he and the right field line because if the balls in off that scoreboard it'll bounce back to him and you can hold the hitter to a single anyway. And that's what happened in Headley's first at bat. So he is basically out there guarding the gap. Preventing the extra base hits. It's only 318 down the right field line here. Owen oh 2. Headley's had a couple of good swings in this at bat. And he hit the ball well his first time up. Runner goes. Pitch is high. Throw to second. Stolen base for Gardner. In order to throw out the best base stealers, everything has to go right. The pitch was easy to throw on, but the throw is in the dirt. Hops up. And with the throw bouncing up, Gardner sneaks in underneath. We see this on Yes Mo, brought to you by your Mercedes Benz Tri State Dealer. The tag is way late. Stolen base number 15. So Gardner's in scoring position with nobody out. Now, obviously, Headley wants to pull the ball. Two and two. Let's see how close uh, Gardner's get to Altuve in the stolen base department here. He's two behind him. Swing and a miss, so Headley does not get the job done. And Gardner stays put at second. This is the very same pitch that he struck out Mason Williams, and it's sort of like the splitter down and away. Looks like it's going to be a strike, and then it disappears. Here's A Rod. He walked in the first inning. Now, I have good information, Kenny, that Wade Boggs, the Hall of Famer, mm -hmm. is watching the broadcast tonight. Oh. Because when we showed the hit leaders, his name was number 20, it was the 26th player yeah. with his amount of hits. And he took a screenshot of it. Mm -hmm. And he said, I think, that, I saw it on Twitter. He said, I think that's perfect, number 26, because that was that his was number. That was his number, with, yeah. With Boston. 
So hope you're doing well, Wade. Uh -huh. And enjoying the game tonight. Great hitter. Number 3,000 was a grand slam. That's the way we reach a milestone. I guess Derek took notes. <laughs> Cause he had a home run for 3,000 as well. You know who caught that ball in the Tampa Bay at Tropicana Field? Who? You know Mike Hogan, our stats guy? Yeah. He's the one who caught Wade Boggs's 3,000 hit. He he's a him. very nice yeah, guy. Yeah, oh, he's, he's super. He was in the stands that day and caught the ball. The 2-2. Two -two. I mean, I, I only got a chance to see Wade on an everyday basis in New York, and this is the 3,000 hit we're talking about. And it was magical the way the way he could hit. I, I can only imagine watching him every day when he was in Boston. Well, if you're playing against him, you didn't want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> when he talked hitting, it was at like a nuclear physicist level. <laughs> Three, two, rounded up the middle, and off the glove of a diving horny. Here comes Gardner. He'll score. It's an RBI single for A-Rod. He's seven hits away from 3,000, and the Yankees have tied the game at one. 29-93, a single up the middle for A-Rod. Also, his 30th run batted end of the season. Do we have an RBI counter as well? Because this is 19, 1999. He's partying. <laughs> <laughs> Off the glove of J.J. Hardy. And on in the center field for a base hit. Now those are the party days. Gardner scores and it's a tie game. You can see Hardy's reaction. Mark Deshera takes inside. 1-0. Oh. <laughs> Still got a ways to go for Hank Aaron. Lined in the center field. That's a base hit for Teixeira. A-Rod will stop at second. First and second. One man out for McCain. It's always interesting to read the notes that we get from the Elias Sports Bureau about how pitchers fare during the course of a ball game and how they do the first time through the batting order, the second time, and the third and and a third time through. First time through for Jimenez, 196, which is pretty good. Second time through, the hitters react a little bit better. They've seen him once. That goes up to 253. McCann pops it up. And the catch is made by Reinhold. I won't have to go away. He's looking over at uh, Adam Jones and watch this late burst of speed. I don't know if the wind caught it or whatever, but he makes the catch for the out. Rimo made a very good catch here last night against uh, the Boston Red Sox up against the wall in left field. So now two down. That brings up Beltron. It's not going to be easy to score Alex on a single here. Not running that well. The arms are pretty good out yeah, there. They are. We mentioned the 20 outfield assist. Adam Jones in center has five. And he's uh, won a gold glove four times. Snyder throws pretty well too. So does Rimo. So oh, it's third base coach Joe Spada might have a big decision here. And what the third base coach looks for is the ball hit directly to the outfielder. Does he have to go to his left or his right to get it? 
You know, is he charging well? He knows that those guys have good arms already. Won't matter. There's a ground ball of Hardy. They get Beltron, and that'll do it for the Yankees. Tie the score on the Alex Rodriguez single. One run, two hits, and two left. Kettering Cancer Center by People's United Bank N.A. See what know-how can do for you and by your Tri-State BMW Centers. That is the National Aquarium. Frames a part of the Inner Harbor. It looks like it was a busy day out there. Temperatures in the mid-90s here in Baltimore. Like July or August. Audi A3 scoreboard shows it's a 1-1 game. Now we go to the top of the O's lineup, starting with Manny Machado. Well, each pitcher is given up a run. Potato on a leadoff walk in the first inning, and Machado came around to score. And Jimenez hit Gardner. And he came around the school. Grounded to third and through Headley. And into foul territory on the third base side as Machado ends up at second. And that's going to be the 14th error of the season by Chase Henley, the most he's ever committed in a full season. And I don't know if that ball got him on the thumb or the bare hand, but he is down, and they're going to come out and check him. Did this ball take a bad hop? Well, maybe not, but it, it got through him. Most of his errors have been throwing errors this year. Let's see if we get a better look at it here. Now I just think he got hit in a vulnerable spot. And uh, it's going to take a while for him to. Uh, recover from that. And he's had the wind knocked out of him so to speak. And the thing about his errors most of his errors have been uh, throwing errors this year. Take a look at this at regular speed and let's see if he got any leather on it at all. The ball's hit hard by Manny Machado. That looked like it eluded his glove altogether. Ball might have hopped up a little bit more than he anticipated. 
Looks like he's okay and the game will continue. That is the strange part about Headley's season. You know, you hope you, you got a decent output from him offensively, but you thought you were getting a sure-handed outstanding third baseman, and even he's puzzled by it. That one is dribbled slowly to third. Pineda Fields runs into Headley, and reaching it first is Paredes with the single. A little Alphonse Gaston there. And that's a single. Little squibber off the end of the bat of Paredes. You can see the on charging Headley, but stepping right in front of him and can't avoid knocking together or running together or Pineda and Headley. And not much on the throw at all. Paredes is going to have a hit. First and third. Nobody out for Baltimore here in the third inning. Now to bring up Adam Jones, who had a fly ball to right center in the first. You know, much in the same way as outfielders say, I got it. I think the same thing applies on ground balls like that. Little, little numbers. Somebody has to call somebody off. Yankees playing back for the double play. And the pitch inside. Nine for 15 in these spots. AL average is 55%. Nice uh, hop there by Machado. Machado looking in at his teammate, and he almost picked him off. And this is why you take your lead in foul territory. If you are hit with the ball while you're in fair territory, you are out. I'm going to make it 4 1 right there. Michael, you talked about uh, Jones, what, 60%? A good slider, tight slider on the inner half. And getting runners in from third with less than two outs. And you get to 70%, that's pretty good. Seven out of 10, you deliver. Line drive, base hit to left field. Machado scores. Paredes will stop at second. An RBI single for Adam Jones. It's 2 1 0s. Well, Jones has been the uh, Baltimore's best player throughout the first third of the season and just beyond. And you can see that pitch kind of sits right in the middle of the plate. And Jones's chase rate this year has gone down. He's been much more selective at the plate. And when you put something right there, he's going to hit it hard. And he lines it over the head of Gregorius. And just like that, the Orioles have the lead. Here's Chris Davis, drove in the O's first run, single right in the first inning. Actually, off the base of the wall and right. One and oh. Davis uh, just barely over 200 in this month. <laughs> Driven deep to right field. Three run home run for Chris Davis, and it's 5 1 0s.
And I mentioned Davis just 200 this month, but he is always one of the most dangerous hitters in this league. He can do that with one swing of the bat. A few years back, he had 53 home runs. When he goes cold, he can be Antarctic or cold, but when he gets hot and that long swing connects, this is what you get production. And there it goes onto the flag court here at Camden Yards. And here's Pineda's reaction on the map. Right in the middle of the plate. That's two off speed pitches in a row. One to Jones and now one to uh, Davis that were hit hard. And that brought Larry Rothschild out for a, a mound visit. So still nobody out here in the third. Four runs in. It's 5 1 Orioles. Here's J.J. Hardy. One and oh. Up the middle, right there is Drew. One down. I think if, if I'm the Yankees, one thing uh, about this ballpark and the nature of it is, I don't ever feel like you're out of a game. I, I know they're down by four, but the Yankees have been scoring lately. And when the weather warms up here, the ball has a tendency to really go. So you're never really out of the game. Put a couple men on base and one swing will put you right back in. Snyder right in on the thumbs. Pops one up to shallow center and Gregorius goes out to get it. For the second out. Strike to Rymold. You know, Rymold has the ability, and we talked about it. I think Buck Showalter is going to give him a good opportunity to seize one of these outfield positions. Well, one thing we saw when a Buck plays Delman Young in right field, it, it happened in last night's game. Rymold started in left and ended up in right field after Buck uh, took Delman Young out of the game for defensive purposes. And the whole thing with Rymo is him staying healthy. It just it's been one injury after another. Dribbled slowly, third base side, but foul. Be the 50th pitch for Pineda. Ground ball to Headley. And that will do it. But a Headley error started this inning for the O's. And this was the big blow. A three run home run off the bat of Chris Davis. We play three in Baltimore. 5 1 O's.
banquet. This date in 2009, Yankees are trailing the Mets 8-7, two outs in the ninth. Luis Castillo drops a pop-up by A-Rod, allowing two runs to score in a wild 9-8 Yankees win. Hits the Gregorius is high. Let's go to the look back machine and Kenny. I've never seen emotions go down and up so quickly. You know what? And the thing about this play, the run that scored was Mark Teixeira all the way from first base. He hustled all the way around and scored the winning run on a pop up to second. Didn't they all get hit with a pie for popping up the second? I think he did. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one on DD. Lincoln scoreboard five one O's. You didn't think that was pie worthy? It wasn't the way it ended up, I guess. Well, I guess every wins, you know, walk off win, pie worthy. DD got robbed of a single. Hit hot shot off the glove of Davis. Flaherty got the carom and flipped it to Jimenez, but DD works a walk here to lead off the fourth. And that's going to bring up Stephen Drew. There's only one second baseman in baseball that has more home runs than Stephen Drew. We just saw Danny Espinosa hit his eighth, so it was, it's not him. Not him. It's not Cano, who has about two. I think he has two. Wow. That, that's it's what, in the American League Central. So it's 27 more teams. Brian Dozier? There you go. Yeah. He has 11. Yeah. Dozier's a he's a 20 home run guy. What do I win? My undying gratitude oh. and respect. No, I'll take that. I was prepared to go through all the teams. <laughs> There's a strike to make it three and one. And it was Stephen Drew's grand slam here. They got the Yankees going earlier this season. Mm -hmm. Pinch hit grand slam. Runner goes. And that one is grounded to second. And they were hoping that Flaherty covered there, but he didn't. So it was right to Flaherty, and Gregorius moves to second, stay out of a double play. That's going to bring up Mason Williams, who struck out in his first big league at bat. That was in the second inning. And the pinch hit homer for Drew came on April the 13th. Grand slam in the seventh inning. High pitch count for Jimenez here in the uh, fourth inning. 73 pitches, 39 strikes. You know, high pitch counts are nothing new for a menace. He, he had a start, uh, no decision last start in Cleveland. A game that uh, Baltimore lost two to one, 107 pitches in five minutes. Mason Williams hits one deep to right field. There it goes. See ya. A two-run home run. What a way to get your first big league hit. And it's five three O's. As you said, one swing can get you back into a ball game. 
He had to be on cloud nine going around the bases. Now the difficult part, getting that ball back. It's one thing to do it at Yankee Stadium. It's another thing on the road. And we mentioned. Well, well, they the got, fan threw it back. Oh, they didn't want it. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I know so somebody they have who the wants baseball, it. yeah. The one thing he had not conquered in the minor leagues this year is, is power. <laughs> He had not hit a home run in the minors. But here in the big leagues, oh, I think he kind of knew it too. I saw him hit a few in the seats during batting practice. One and two on Gardner. So you wonder if he even felt the ground as he was running around for the home run. But take a look at his family and friends. Look at this reaction. How great is that? And you said it earlier, Michael. When you make the big leagues, your whole family makes the big leagues. Headley rips one foul. And that was the Yankees' reaction at the bench. And the one long. Now you wonder if home plate was electrified because they had a big <laughs> smile light up right after he touched it. Grounded to first. Davis is there. And that'll do it. But the Yankees get back in the game, and they do it in dramatic fashion. A rookie in his second big league at bat picks up his first big league hit, and he made it count. A two-run home run.
the starting lineup so you can fill out your 2015 insurance MLB All-Star Game ballot now at Yankees.com. Voting is exclusively online and available on your computer, tablet, and smartphone. Vote up to 35 times for your favorite players at Yankees.com. Ryan Flaherty leads off and takes a pitch high from Pineda. Lincoln scoreboard, Orioles 5, Yankees 3. Well, I know uh, Baltimore still has the lead at 5 to 3, but there's been a momentum swing in the game with the two run home run by Mason Williams. And now it's up to Michael Pineda to have a shutdown inning. Give the Yankees a chance to creep even closer in their next at bat. Soft ground ball. Right side, Pineda flips to Teixeira for the first out. Caleb Joseph rockets one to center field. Mason Williams has to go over his head and up against the wall. Joseph's at second, and he's going to stop right there. Now that ball just rocketed it over his head. I think there was a pause there, Kenny, where he might have taken one half step in. Yeah, uh, maybe uh, a route that was slightly off. It looked like he was going to get there to make the play, and all of a sudden the ball just sails over his head. And Joseph's going to be credited with a double, but you can see Mason Williams, if he makes a little different angle going after it, he would have had a better chance of making the play. Instead, fooled by the line drive, and the Orioles have a man at second with one out. Big Mike not sure. And now he's going to go over and back up third base. So here's Machado. Fly ball. Right field. Long run for Beltron. He just can't get there as it lands untouched in foul territory and bounces into the seats. Count one and one. Take a look at this last pitch. You can holding it there a long time for Paul Emma, but the ball was uh, just inside. Line drive, base it past the diving Gregorius. Joseph had a hold up. To see if the ball was caught, so it's a base hit for Machado, and the O's have runners on first and third with one out. Yeah, ball, a couple of balls hit hard. First the one by Joseph, and now the one by Machado, who increases his hitting streak to six straight games. And tonight, Pineda's had more pitches hanging right in the middle of the plate, and we told you the Orioles have been hot as a team, so they're they're not going to miss it. A lot of balls hit hard in tonight's game. Baltimore has seven hits and we're just in the fourth inning. It's not a problem throwing strikes. It's a problem where he's throwing it. 
Here's Jimmy Paredes. He's two for two. Nice size crowd here. Camden Yards. Making some noise as the Orioles are threatening in the bottom of the fourth. 5 3 Baltimore. Paredes first uh, came off to disable this and joined the Orioles as you see the Yankee bullpen starting to heat up. Paredes was red hot. And he cooled off a bit, but now he's starting to heat up again. So it's the up and downs of a season. Jacob Lindgren getting up and throwing in the Yankee bullpen. The rookie. To right field. Joseph scores. Machado moves to second. An RBI single for Paredes, who's three for three. And it is now 6 3 Baltimore. Well, that shutdown inning we were talking about is not going to happen. As Baltimore has scored here in the fourth inning, they've hit three balls hard. Low and in. Paredes doesn't miss this one. Line drive over second. As we said, he's starting to heat up again. Gets himself a run batted in. And again, Larry Rothschild comes out. Now, we've heard pitchers say this before, Kenny. Uh -huh. When you have more rest than you're used to, you might feel stronger, but the thing that goes is your location. And yeah. you mentioned his pitches, there's, you know, he's got a crisp fastball, but he's not putting it where he wants. And he usually has unerring control. Yeah, everything has been sitting towards the middle of the plate. And, uh, Big league hitters, you, you get it towards the middle, they're, they're going to put some wood on it. And tonight we've seen several balls hit very hard off Michael Pineda. And you have to remember the last time he saw these Orioles, they couldn't touch him. 16 strikeouts in seven innings, at least two in every inning. And here's the dangerous Adam Jones. Fly ball to center, RBI, single in the third. First and second, one man out. The 0 1. High fly ball. Left center on the run. Mason Williams on the track. He runs it down and makes the play. Tagging it second and going to third is Machado. And a long second out. And a lot of ground covered by Mason Williams. And the ball is really carrying. Adam Jones didn't miss by much. 
Yet another ball hit pretty well. Ballpark just holds this one as Mason Williams approaches the uh, sign in left field, makes the catch. Uh, once again, we're going to check this out on Yesmo. One step into the wall and gets the ball back in. And Baltimore has runners on the corners. So this inning, Mason giveth and taketh away. This play to ball into a double for Caleb Joseph and then takes an extra base hit away from Adam Jones. They'll remember this fourth inning for a long time. Here's Chris Davis. Popped up. Shallow left coming on as Gardner, and that'll do it. But the Orioles get a run on three hits, two men left. We go to the fifth, 6 3, Baltimore. Scoreboard here in Baltimore. We go to the top of the fifth inning. The Orioles lead the Yankees by a score of six to three. And Alex Rodriguez will lead off. Exciting part of this game: Mason Williams' first big league hit, a two-run home run. His mom, Colleen, is uh, in the ballpark with family and friends. And Sarah Kustak is with her. Sarah? Yes, I am, Mike. And uh, Colleen, just describe. To me, what it was like when you see your son Mason making his major league debut and hitting that two run home run. I could, I'm so proud of him to begin with. I'm so proud. We just grabbed each other. We couldn't believe it. We didn't even actually see it actually go out, but we knew it was going. Kelly, so satisfied. Kelly, take me back to the phone call. Mason told us earlier in the clubhouse he immediately called his parents right after he got the call. What went through your mind when you received that phone call from Mason? It was really loud on the bus, so he. I thought he said, I just got called up, and I said, what did you say? He said, I just got called up. I said, oh, my God. It was really loud, and I. he was, like, a little choked up. So I said to him, okay, I said, just call me when you get off the bus. I said, just call me when you get off the bus. And I just went immediately online, looked at the schedule, and booked tickets for my son and myself. What has this journey been like? Drafted in 2010, what has this journey been like? For the past five years waiting for this moment and, and for Mason to finally achieve this goal. Uh, it's just been a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work and I'm thankful and blessed that I'm able to be here to watch him. Well, we're certainly appreciative of your time and want to make sure you and, and your son Kobe who's here and plenty of friends get a chance to enjoy this moment. Thank you so much. All right, Colin. Mike, back over to you. Thank you, Sarah. A-Rod laces one to right, caught there by Snyder. Kenny, you uh, you had it happen to you. Yeah. Mom and dads. Wow. Yeah, it, it's amazing. My mom and dad got to watch on TV because uh, I was in uh, Chicago when right. the Mets called me up. And uh, uh, one thing I do remember my first game, 
I'm in the dugout of Wrigley Field. I look over the dugout, and there's my dad's dad. My grandpa was at the game. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. A strike two to Shara. But I didn't hit a home run. <laughs> I went over four. Oh and two. You made up for that, Kenny. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> The 0 2 to Sheridan on strikes two way here in the fifth. You know, as you watch these two pitchers work, it's almost as if who gets energized from this point on? Who can really shut down the opposition? And uh, Jimenez comes out here and gets two outs. A Rod hit the ball pretty hard, but that's it, one in on the hands of Teixeira. Almost perfectly placed and strikes him out. Can takes a strike. Now, I always felt one of the things about him, is that it makes him kind of difficult to hit is his delivery. As you can see, he drops the ball behind him, hides it very well. Watch him go. Well, not as big a delivery as he used to have, but watch the hand come way back behind him, and it's going to come all the way back up, and the hitter has to pick that up. You know, I think back to a pitcher like Rick Sutcliffe, who used to drop the ball behind him. Sutcliffe, in fact, pitched the first ever game for the Orioles in this ballpark. And he had a, a very similar type delivery. Out straight back here. Swing and a miss. Joseph fires the first, so it's a strikeout, put out, two, three. McCann is 0 for 3 against Jimenez. The end of four and a half, we are halfway through. Orioles 6 and the Yankees 3. And Fios, the fastest, most reliable internet. CC Sabathia gets the call against Bud Norris. And uh, that game's going to be on Fox, but you have to turn to uh, yes right after the game for Yankee extra innings coverage. Now there's a new third baseman for the Yankees, and that's Brendan Ryan. Chase Headley 
got charged with an error on a tough hop. And it was an error. He has to make that play. And, and you he, wonder uh, he if he was that injured. Plays out. Yeah. yeah, he was injured on that play. Bigelow T scoreboard 6 3. Orioles lead. Now we talked about Weeders coming back for Baltimore. Uh, J.J. Hardy hasn't been back all that long either. He was injured in spring training. He ran into Jonathan Scope. They were both going for a ground ball through the middle. And Hardy came out second best. The ironic thing about that is that Scope, he was okay, but now Scope's on to disable us. He was injured on a play here against the Boston Red Sox early this year. And the feeling is he might be back sometime just before or after the All Star break. And how he got injured was kind of unusual. He was running down the first base and he tripped over Mike Napoli's foot and uh, messed up his knee. Of course, Napoli with the Red Sox. And the payoff. J.J. Hardy works a walk. In three of the five innings, Baltimore has had the leadoff man get on. And this is the second time it's happened because of the walk. Both of the walks that Pineda's given up have been leadoff walks in an inning. Hits the Snyder it is a strike. Well, we will um, get you any information as soon as we hear it about Chase Headley. And Ryan tested right away and makes the play after a great stretch by Teixeira. And Hardy moves to second. It appeared that uh, Ryan would have a force at second, but he bobbled the ball, couldn't get it out of his glove. Looked like he was going to shovel it to second base to pick off the lead runner. He had to range far to his left, bobbles, an off balance throw, and an even better play on the other end by Mark Teixeira. This is not only laying out, he had to scoop it out of the dirt and keep the foot on the bag. That, that's a gold glove play. The share has actually gone 109 straight games without an error. He's played great defense. He might have saved uh, Brendan Ryan an error there. But I think only what? Don Mattingly is it? Yep. Mattingly has a longer streak. With a 2 0 count, Larry Rothschild, we're in a path out to the pitcher's mound. First base is open. And then they're giving a the bullpen a chance to get going here. It looks like uh, young Mr. Lindgren is up again. Yep.
You have a lefty on deck and uh, Ryan Flaherty. There's a strike. Three and two. Fastball's been around 92, 93 all night. Yeah, that's. Uh... But he hasn't had the crispness with his breaking ball or his changeup. That, that's that's been the difference for him tonight. His slider. We've seen some of them sit in the middle. The changeup hasn't uh, been as effective. When he's on, he has three pitches, keeps the hitters off balance, and there are three putaway pitches as well. Lined into right field, and Beltron can't make the play as he plays it on the short hop. And because you weren't sure if he made the catch, Hardy had to hold up, so he just moves to third. That's going to do it for Michael Pineda, who's been hit hard tonight. So Girardi makes the Verizon call to the bullpen. And after skipping a start, Michael Pineda was not as sharp as he was previously. He looks to build on last weekend's victory when they take on the Montreal Impact here at Yankee Stadium. Watch New York City FC presented by Eddie Hot Airways tomorrow night at 7 right here on Yes. We're not at Yankee Stadium. We're at Camden Yards. But it will be at Yankee Stadium tomorrow night. So that should be a good one. And if you can't get to the stadium, you can watch it on Yes. Pretty cool. Michael Pineda not feeling good about things. Gave up nine hits, six runs, five of them earned. The two runners on base are his responsibility. The two walks stand out, Kenny, because yeah. that's not him. And just two strikeouts. Well, one of the walks came around to score, and another could here with first and third and one out. And now the youngster, Jacob Lindgren, seven games already in the big leagues. He's a vet. And he's going to deal with Ryan Flaherty at the plate. First and third, one man out, six three O's. Good slider. Right out of the box, a nasty pitch.
Line right at Drew, and he's going to double up Reimold, who did not read that well. So it's a 4-3 double play, and Lindgren gets the two outs he needs. No runs to hit, no errors, and one man left. We go to the sixth inning, and it's 6-3 O's. One of the hottest collectibles of the season. It's Thurman Munson Bobblehead Night, the second in the 2015 Collectible Series presented by AT&T for the first 18,000 guests in attendance. For tickets, log on to Yankees.com, visit the Yankee Stadium ticket window, Yankees Clubhouse Shops, or call Ticketmaster at 877 469 9849. And Carlos Beltran takes a strike from Jimenez. Jimenez's his best pitch tonight uh, two strike pitch to left handed hitters has been that off speed splitter that really dives away. Good swing by Beltron. One of the problems for Jimenez has always been the pitch count he's up over 100 already. Oh and two. On Beltron. There's that splitter, but it was in the dirt. Beltron wouldn't chase it. Wasn't close enough to the strike zone to get him to swing. That one is looped into right field. It's a base hit. He found a hole in the zone and picks up a leadoff single here in the six. Off the end of the bat, broken bat, base hit. You can get a new bat. You can't always get a base hit. Buck Showalter out of the dugout. After 104 pitches, he's going to take the ball from Ubaldo Jimenez and go to his bullpen.
was the thrilling moment of the game. Brought to you by Pepsi. Mason Williams, his first big league hit, and it was a big one, a two-run home run. Yankees trail this one six to three. Runner on first base here starting the sixth. And the Orioles go to the bullpen and they bring on the left hander TJ McFarland. Now this is the part of the lineup where the Yankees have four consecutive left handed hitters. And that's why Buck Showalter goes to the uh, left hander McFarland who's spent part of the year in the minor leagues. Ubaldo Jimenez's night is done. Five plus innings six hits. Six punch outs and a runner at first is his responsibility. Hit sharply and grabbed there by Flaherty. Goes the second one on to first. Not in time. That's some play by the second baseman. You know one thing about the shift when you have the uh, three fielders on the right side a great stop by Flaherty but you can see that Hardy really can't step across the bag and get some power into the throw. He's retreating to get back to the bag gets the throw and then has to throw flat footed to first base. It's not like he's coming across the bag with momentum. That means you can't get as much on the throw and that gives Gregorius a chance to beat the relay. You can see he's retreating to the bag. Catches it and has to throw flat footed. Here's Steven Drew. Three infielders on the right side again. Now, this is Show Walter's lefty play because he has two left handers in the bullpen. The other one is his closer, Zach Britton. So for tonight, he decided this one I want to yeah. have my lefty come in and face all these lefties in a row. You know, the managers get the opposing uh, lineup well before game time, and managers think they, they look at the opposing lineup and say, Well, this is my opportunity where I can use a certain pitcher, whether it be a left hander or a right hander out of the bullpen. And uh, managers think go well ahead of how the game might play out. It's not just they just show up, see the other team come on the field, and then play it from there. Mason Williams on deck. Now that could be a time for Girardi to bring in Chris Young to pinch hit for Mason Williams. But Wilson Williams is on deck. And Drew goes down on strikes. And they are going to call Mason Williams back and they'll go with Chris Young. Of course, Chris Young with the capabilities of playing center field. He's got a reputation that has uh, been well earned over the years of hitting uh, very well against left handed pitching. That hasn't been altered this year. He's hit much better against lefties and righties. And it's the little give and take game within the game, Kenny, mm -hmm. because Girardi's thinking. This is when I know I could get him in a bat against a lefty because mm -hmm. with Gardner coming out, Showalter's not taking him out, and nobody's warming up. So I know if I send him up here, I'm getting the bat against a lefty I want. Chris Young, 327. There's the breakdown. 327 against left-handed pitchers, and only 149 against right-handers, despite the fact he's hit three home runs off right-handed pitchers. So you're right. It's point counterpoint.
And of course it. Chris Young was alerted. Well ahead of time so he go down uh, there's batting cages just beyond the dugout underneath in the tunnel. Take a few swings and get loose. Remember Jim Cott saying as the swing and miss comes one to get loose and two to produce. Now it's interesting to look at what Williams did against left-handed pitching at Triple A. In, in just 26 at bats, he had 346, and he had 309 against righty pitching in 55 at bats. Uh -huh. Small sample size, but it doesn't look like he's overwhelmed by a left-handed. Well, he was having one of those years, by far his best offensive years in the minors leagues. As I learned a long time ago, your batting average can go up and down, but those home runs and RBIs they can't take away. Hit sharply and threw for a base hit. A pinch hit single for Young. Well, you can see what Joe Girardi was thinking. Get Chris Young uh, in at bat here. And he rifles one by Manny Machado. Hardy didn't have a chance either. And all of a sudden, the Yankees have the tying run at the plate. So first and second with two outs and here is Brett Gardner. Mentioned general manager Dan Duquette of the, the Orioles, and uh, Dan Duquette years ago was the GM of the Montreal Expos, along with being a little later on the GM of the Boston Red Sox. But in Montreal, he had to uh, make moves to try and put a winning club on the team while not spending all that much money. So he was well schooled. You think of several GMs went through there and had to learn their trade. Uh, Dave Dombrowski was there. Kevin Malone, who actually came to Baltimore, became the GM, was in Montreal at one time. So it's like a training ground to work with a low budget, and then come to a bigger market team, and maybe have a little bit more funds at your disposal. Good eye by Gardner. You know, Duquette was out of baseball for 10 years yeah. after he lost the Red Sox job, and you look at the job he did in Montreal, he put together a really good team. Yeah. And then in Boston, that was the, he laid the, the foundation for their championships. And he also acquired Pedro Martinez twice. Twice, yeah. Both of them pretty good deals. <laughs> but couldn't get a job for 10 years. The 2 1, 3 and 1 to Gardner. On deck is Brendan Ryan. Remember, Chase Headley's out of the game. We're still waiting word on, on the injury if there is an injury. And he walked him. So the bases are loaded with Yankees. And here comes Dave Wallace. So they are going to allow the left hander McFarland to face Brendan Ryan. And only now some action in the Orioles bullpen as A Rod's on deck. Yeah, that's why there's action in the bullpen because A Rod's up next. And they're going to get a right hander going. Ryan kind of broke back into the big leagues 
a Wednesday with a bang. Went two for three. Drove in a run, scored one. Had a triple. In the game against the Nats, there's Alex Rodriguez on deck, one RBI away from 2,000. It's uh, Tommy Hunter, hard thrower, warming up in the uh, Baltimore bullpen. All right, so this spot was Headley's, and uh, Headley was one for three before being removed. Brendan Ryan first game back on Wednesday, two hits and three at bats. Oh, and one. Chris Martin called up from Triple A. One and one. Brendan Ryan trying to keep the line moving to get to Alex Rodriguez. Foul off. And when Ryan came back, he thought the mustache uh, was still in vogue for the Yankees. Of course, uh, the Yankees have since all shaven. But when you get break in your first game, you go two for three. You're going to keep it. Gives him that Errol Flynn look. You're dating yourself, Kenny. No, I never did that. <laughs> <laughs> the one, two. Line drive to right field, and it's a foul ball. <laughs> well, you, you turn on the American movie channel, and you, you run into an Errol Flynn movie every once Absolutely. in a while. Bases loaded with the Yankees. Two outs. We're in the six. It's six three Orioles. Two and two. Good take by Brendan Ryan. Down and in for ball two. McFarland wants this to be the pitcher decision. He does not want to go to three balls and two strikes. With that man looming. Fly ball, left center. Adam Jones drifts back, makes the play, and that will do it. So the Yankees threaten but can't push across a run. No runs, two hits. The bases are left loaded.
kept up with Brandon Steiner as some of New York's greatest athletes honor New York's finest, including the precincts and families of two fallen heroes. It's all new tonight after the Yankees postgame, only on Yes. Now Yankees move Gardner to center, and Young takes over at left. Jacob Lindgren still in. And it's Chris Young, the new left fielder. High fly ball, deep left center, and that ball is gone. A home run for Joseph, his fifth of the year at 7 3 0s. The Yankees have had all kinds of problems with Caleb Joseph this year. He is now 13 for 24 against the Yankees this year. And that's his second home run against Yankee pitching. And here comes Joe Girardi. So he is going to make the call to the bullpen with Manny Machado due up. It's 0 7, Yankees 3, here at the bottom of the sixth. Comes to Fox and Fox Sports One for the first time as the greatest golfers in the world converge on the Pacific Northwest for a chance to stamp their names into the history books. Fox's exclusive coverage of the 115th U.S. Open Championship live from Chambers Bay Golf Course begins June, uh, June 18th on Fox Sports One, Fox, and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Looks like a tough, tough course. I'm looking forward to hearing. Uh, Joe Buck and, uh, and Greg Norman should yeah. be should be great. We had a story today that all the guys, how cool is this, Kenny? All the guys that do golf on other networks. Yeah. Once it was announced that Fox got the, uh, the U.S. Open, Mike Tirico said whatever you need. Jim Nance said whatever you need. They sent him notes and stuff like that. You know what? I wonder if they got to John Flaherty because Flash has actually played Chambers Bay. Really? He did a couple of years ago. Esmil Rogers comes on for the Yankees to face Machado. And the pitch is high. Get Flash to give a scouting report. Esmil Rogers has not pitched that well of late. See the bloated ERA. And that's off the glove of a diving of Brendan Ryan. It's a base hit for Machado. Machado has been warming up. He told you he's got a six game hitting streak. This is his second hit tonight. He scored a couple of runs. This one off the glove of Brendan Ryan. It's going to be a base hit. Machado is hit now in 36 of his last 47 games. After getting off to a very slow start this year. Yeah. 
There's Jimmy Paredes. He's three for three tonight. Paredes actually came up through the Yankee system and they traded him to Houston in 2010 for Lance Berkman. We've told the story before. He loved being a Yankee, and uh, when he was told, he, he cried for hours before he finally realized, hey, I, I, I've got to go. Turned into a pretty good player. Well, he's, he's a good hitter. Switch hitter hits much better from this side of the plate. Those who will tell you his swing kind of reminds uh, from this side reminds everybody of Robinson Cano. I don't know if I'll go that far, but I mean he's hitting over 300. Ground ball to first. Teixeira fires high. And there's Teixeira's first error in 109 games. So Paredes will reach on the fielder's choice. And Machado ends up on third base on E3. MC Nan in a long, long time. Trying to get it over the runner. Also gets it over Brendan Ryan. This part's the easy part. He comes up with it, but misses his intended receiver, and there goes uh, Machado to third. The streak is over. First and third, still nobody out. Here's Adam Jones. Uh, strike. Now here's where he used to be able to uh, expand the strike zone and Adam Jones would follow. Particularly that slider down and away but this year he's been less apt to chase that pitch. Let's see how they want to work him here. And that one gets past McCann. Machado scores. It goes all the way to third base foul territory because it hit off the brick and just kicked around rather than right back to Brian McCann. They're going to take another look at this wild pitch and how it actually caromed all the way up by the Yankee dugout and all the way down the line. Watch it hit. That's brick back there. So it's going to take a, a quick hop one way or the other through McCann. A runner's going to score. And it made a left turn towards the dugout. Brendan Ryan has to run it down. That's a very wild pitch. High fly ball. Center field. Brett Gardner will make the play. Tagging is Paredes. The throw. Not in time. There's a 
another look at that uh, wild pitch from Esmeral Rogers. Slider down and away. Adam Jones is not going to chase. Looked like it hit a crease. That's actually a gate there. Yeah, I don't think it hit the brick. No, it, it can go and hit that crease and just carry him off to the uh, well, to the right. That's where um, you can actually walk onto the field from that gate. The umpires enter, and the, there's the umpires' room is up that tunnel, just to the left. Yankees bring the infield in for Chris Davis. Davis has had a big night. Four runs batted in. Eight three Orioles, bottom of the six. Kind of waves through that one. One and one. Yeah, despite the low batting average, Davis leads the Orioles in home runs and runs batted in. And if you look at him at the plate there. We had that tight shot. Man's got some forearms. And that's why he's able to hit the ball a mile. The whole problem for him is uh, contact. Rounded two to Shara. He will tag out Davis. No, he won't. He'll go to the bag and step on the bag. F. Parady stays at third. The Yankees are going to win this game. They're going to have to come back against uh, an Oriole bullpen that's been pretty strong lately. One and one on Hardy. 0 for 2 with a walk. 8 3 Orioles lead. Lined in the right field. It is a base hit. And it's going to get past Beltron and go to the wall. A run scores. Hardy will stop at second with an RBI double, and it's 9 3 Baltimore. Larry Rothschild. I don't know if we've been counting, but he's been after the mound quite often tonight. J.J. Hardy gets in on the action. It's his first hit of the night, going to drive in a run. And the Orioles increase their lead. It's now 9 to 3.
Snyder is 0 for 3. Ground ball to first, pop up to short, and ground ball to third. Runner at second for Hardy, his ninth run batted in of the year. One and oh. It's sharply a base hit to right field. Hardy rounds third. He's coming home. And the throw is not nearly in time. An RBI single for Snyder. And it's 10 3 O's. Snyder gets his first hit of the night, and this one drives in a run. So five different Baltimore Oriole hitters have driven in a run tonight. Snyder being the latest on this sharp single in the right field. As Beltran gets it in, couple of hops, it's going to be late. Here's Reimold. And a strike. Owen two on Rymold. Now the last time he tried to get a right handed hitter to chase Owen two, he threw a wild pitch. Let's see what happens here. Swings and misses, and that will do it. But the O's put up a four spot. They turn it into a 10 3 lead as we go to the seven. By T Mobile. Let's go back to the third inning. It's Chris Davis up with two men on, and this is a three run shot. His 13th home run of the year. And really kind of broke it open for Baltimore. That made it 5 to 1 at the time. It's 10 3 now as we go to the uh, seventh inning, and Tommy Hunter, hard throwing right hander, the Orioles' third pitcher, takes over. And he'll face A Rod, Teixeira, and McCann.
A Rod one for two with a walk and a ribby. And pitch is high. Hunter, a very hard throw, a fastball uh, over 95 at times. His problem in the past has been giving up too many home runs. A Rod was thinking home run right there. Laid on that one, grounded a foul. Boston jumped out to an early lead over Red Hot Toronto. It's 8 7 now, Boston over the Blue Jays, top of the seventh at Fenway. Tampa Bay leads the White Sox 6 3, top of the seventh. That's at Tropicana Field. And that one is dunked in the center field for a base hit. And the hit counter shows he is now six hits away from 3,000. Hit number 2,994. Chris Davis trying to get the attention of Tommy Hunter saying he's going to play behind the runner. You're not going to hold a rod on. Back to sure dunks one in the center field for a base hit. Couple of singles to start up the inning for the Yankees first and second nobody out. That's going to bring up Brian McCann 0 for 3 tonight with two strikeouts and a fly ball to left. The whole idea for the Yankees right now is just keep the line moving. You saw a couple of dunkers, they ride into center. For sure, into left center. Count on one. And the numbers on the Yankees two for nine runners in scoring position, eight men left on base. They left three on in the first and three on last inning. One and one. Fly ball, right field. Snyder makes the catch. Tagging is A Rod. And he just gets in. And awkwardly was trying to keep his balance as he came into third. Should I slide? Should I not? He might have anticipated the throw going to second base. And it looked like J.J. Uh, Hardy's going to cut it off, but he just let it go. First of all, trying to keep from being hit. Safety at third base. And he's in third talking with Manny Machado, grew up idolizing A Rod. That's where he wears number 13. Manny from Miami. First and third. One out here in the seventh. And here is Beltron. And that one is looped into right center field. Coming on is Jones. He makes the play as A Rod stays at third. Adam Jones covers an awful lot of ground in center field. He can go back on the ball. He could come in, and he's got a very strong throwing arm. All that has added up to four gold gloves. In fact, he's at three straight. Coming on quickly. And then fires the whole day rod at third base. <laughs> 
Now something is up. Something got loose around home plate. So Joseph doing some housekeeping. Here's D.D. Gregorius with two outs, runners on the corners. 0-1. Popped up. Joseph gives it a look, but it's over the screen. Just barely. That was the first or second row shot. Young Yankee fan gets a souvenir. Looks like a few generations there, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's great. The 0 2. Swing and a miss. So, two singles to start up the inning. Do not halt Hunter. Time for the seventh inning stretch. 10 3 0s. Orioles, it's 10 3. Game summary brought to you by your local Nissan dealer. Chris Davis, two for four, home run and four ribbies. Orioles are nine for 17 with runners in scoring position. And Mason Williams, in his first big league game, second big league at bat, gets his first big league hit, a two run home run. Esmeal Rogers still in there as Ryan Flaherty leads off the bottom of the seventh. 1 0. There's only one Oriole without a hit tonight. And this is the man. Always one guy doesn't get a chance to join the party. Slow roller up the first baseline. Foul ball. Michael, I can never see you being that guy. 
I never saw me hit. <laughs> I mean, it's a joy of the party. Like the good party. Yeah, well, somebody's going to call you. I've been that guy. Not too often. Yeah, well. Just couldn't get inside that velvet rope. So the count full at three and two. Darren O'Day. Ground ball grabbed there by Tessera. Nice play. He can't get a handle though. As Flaherty reaches. Well, they have a wild one going on at Fenway. Bob, tell us more. What's going on there? Unbelievable. Uh, the Blue Jays are red hot and the Red Sox are the opposite of that. Yeah, the Red Sox just got swept here. The Blue Jays, the highest scoring team in the league. Uh, to share, I believe this is going to go as a base hit. Yes, it is. It? Yeah, it's a base hit. So every one of their hitters, I guess it's better late than never as far as Flaherty is concerned. Here's Caleb Joseph. Hit a home run off of Jacob Lindgren leading off the sixth inning. He is two for three with two runs scored. Fly ball, right center. And they both looked at each other and it fell untouched. Another Alphonse Gaston. A sloppy game for the Yankees. Uh, you can see when Gardner started, he looked at Beltran, and all Beltran did was look back. And the ball is going to fall just between the both of them. This, this as Michael said, a very sloppy play. They're kind of looking at each other, very tentative, and the ball drops in. Whoa. Joseph has his third hit, a gift. Machado fouls it back. Two. 
it's certainly not a game uh, from a Yankee standpoint you're going to write home about. I, maybe the only one who has a, a right to write home is uh, Mason Williams. But he doesn't really have to. Mom well, just has to go and talk to them. Yeah, his mom is here tonight, mom and brother. Colleen and Kobe. There's young Mr. Williams, first major league hit, a two run home run. Seats. You got to stick around for the postgame show because I'm sure that Sarah Kustak will talk with Mason and see what he was feeling as he's rounding the bases. You know, I think he has to conduct a very kind of low key, if you will. Right. Can't be too happy. No, he can't be. Now Sarah is uh, filling in for the. Uh, I guess Meredith Morales is on assignment. Yeah. Is that how you're going to call it? I would call it vacation. I, I think she's on a silent assignment. Okay. Yeah. We'll go with that. And Meredith will rejoin us in Miami, which strangely enough is where the assignment is this weekend. <laughs> Two battling Rogers. Machado's had himself a good night. He's got a couple of hits. He's scored three times. Those who are talking about Machado being dropped down further in the lineup because he's starting to add some power. He's got 10 home runs now. And the feeling would be that Nolan Reimold would take over in the leadoff spot where the Orioles have used him in the past. So we'll, we'll see how Buck maneuvers his lineup, not only this series, but uh, you know, the next few times the Yankees come in. Popped up. McCann he runs out of room. Come back here one more time, and that would be the last three games of the season of well, the regular season October 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. Almost walked into this one. Let's see how it missed him. Like a running fastball, two seamer. Swing and a miss. Rogers wins the battle. Thank you. 
Picks up his second strikeout. Let's see how he does it after moving him off the plate. Well, that was kind of a hanger. Yeah, that was right there, and Machado just swung right through it. Maybe trying to do too much. Sometimes the pitchers come up there looking so good that you put more than your A swing on it. You're trying to hit it about 15 miles instead of just 10, and you don't get it at all. Yankee shift for Paredes. Three infielders on the right side. Jimmy's three for four. Big lead at third for Flaherty. Yeah, he can afford to take as much as Brendan Ryan gives him, and uh, Ryan with the lefty hitter up and the shift on is almost at the shortstop position. The 2 0. Scores that we see up on the board remain on the win column and the loss column, the way they're trending. It's going to tighten up even more in the East. Yeah. Tampa Bay could pull to within a game. Toronto to within two. Baltimore within three. And Boston will stay seven out unless the Yankees rally. Rounded to second. There's one. Not in time. Run scores. It's 11 3. And Paredes runs very well, and he was able to pick himself up a run batted in. His second of the game does a hustle down the line. And the force at second is a 4 5 because Ryan took the throw. He's playing third base. There's Paredes. And with that hustle, gets himself a run batted in. Here's Adam Jones. Chris Capuano is up. Yeah, you can see the pitch count for Esmeral Rogers up to 47 now. You know, Kenny, you always have to worry if you're a relief pitcher mm -hmm. and you throw a lot of pitches in an outing because then you become somebody who's useless to them for the next couple of days. Yeah. And that's when you get formed out. And I believe that Esmeral has options. Yeah. I think. Well, I, I do remember the night, the 19 inning game. Yeah. Well, he was in there forever in that game. Mm -hmm. And he didn't go anywhere after that. I think they sent Shreve, who also yeah. threw a lot of pitches that night.
So his next offering will be his 50th pitch. And basically he's he's thrown these 50 pitches in two innings. So certainly under duress during the time he's been in there. That one's popped up to Shara. Makes the play. And that will do it. One run, two hits. One man left. Seven in the books, 11 3 0s. Post game is Bob Lorenz and Jack Curry break down tonight's opener. Plus, Sarah Kustak has a reaction from the clubhouse as well as Joe Girardi's manager's report. It's all coming up on the WB Mason Yankees post game. Only on yes, we did a little digging, and uh, Esmil Rogers does not have any options left. So yeah. that's why he has survived days like this. If uh, if he's not on the team tomorrow, it will be because he was designated for assignment. They cannot send him down to Scranton Books Barry. There are no day as you can see the numbers will tell you he's had a pretty good year. He's only allowed two earned runs in his last 21 outings. And he gets a chance to work here with an eight run lead. And you can see the unusual delivery on our Hyundai scoreboard it's 11 to 3. Baltimore's leading. See where O'Day is from. Right, we look at the motion. Karen O'Day was born in Jacksonville, Florida. That one is looped and caught by Davis, retiring Drew. And he resides in Smyrna, Georgia, but he throws from down under. That's going to bring up Chris Young. Young pinch hit for Mason Williams in the sixth and single to left field. Williams making his first big league start, struck out in his first at bat in the second, and hit a home run for his first big league hit, a two run shot in the fourth. 
We showed you the splits on Young. This is when Young has problems against a pitcher. Throws with the right arm. Yeah, well, not only the right arm, but the, the, the fact is the way that O'Day delivers can make it even more difficult for any right-handed hitter. Kind of slings it up there. It's almost like he's throwing from behind you. Yeah, left handed hitters hit O'Day 273. Right handers hit him at 125. High fly ball, left field. Reimold drifts back. Makes the play. For the second out. Let's take a look at the swing that got Mason Williams his first home run. This replay brought to you by New York Presbyterian, the official hospital of the New York Yankees. Amazing things are happening here. Yeah, right on the sweet spot. And mom and brother like it. <laughs> Here's Brett Gardner. One for two, walked and hit by a pitch. Stolen base as well, run scored. No day last work on June the 10th, which was Wednesday, and he picked up a save, two innings works, uh, two innings of work against Boston, and he struck out four. The Orioles did play last night as they completed the sweep against the Red Sox. O'Day got the day off. He's in there tonight, albeit with an eight-run lead. One two. The 2 2. And Gardner's work to count for. As I look at uh, the last outing for the Oriole bullpenners, and some of them did work last night. So uh, O'Day, one of the guys that's a little more rested, that's why he's in there. Strike three, Gardner down looking. So O'Day works a 1 2 3 eighth inning. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Orioles 11, Yankees 3.
Chris emerged as the unlikely 1998 World Series MVP with all new interviews and eyewitness accounts. Relive all the drama on a new Yankeeography, Moments of Glory, Wednesday at 11, only on Yes. Well, I'm sure they will show that uh, home run off Trevor Hoffman. Yep. Garrett Jones takes over first base for Mark Teixeira. And Chris Capuano takes over for Esmeral Rogers. And the Yankees also have a new catcher in the game. And that's John Ryan Murphy. Well, the first inning might have been a portent of things to come. As the Hyundai scoreboard shows you, Orioles 11, Yankees 3. Yankees had the bases loaded and nobody out against Ubaldo Jimenez, and they did not get a run in the top of the first. And there's a strike to Chris Davis. A weird streak is on the line here. Chris Davis has struck out at least once in 16 straight games against the Yankees. Oh, two thirds of the way there. The record against the Yankees Lefty Grove, a pitcher, 20 games in a row. Dean Chance, another pitcher, 19 games in a row. And one position player, Josh Willingham, 19 games in a row, 2011 through 2014. Fun 11 3 stats. <laughs> you know, think about it. Dean Chance was known as one of the poorest hitting pitchers in the history of the game. But he's also known as a Cy Young Award winner. He won the Cy Young Award with the Angels. Early in their uh, existence, he and Bo Belinsky and uh, you know when they still played at Wrigley Field, it, LA's Wrigley Field. Well, they also played at Dodger Stadium for a while. Uh, I, yeah, I wonder where it was. I think it probably was Dodger Stadium. There is a base hit for Davis. So unless he comes up to bat again, he breaks that streak of uh, 16 straight games with at least one strikeout. They're going to have a pinch runner for him. It's going to be David Lowe. So Davis will get the rest of the night off after driving in uh, four runs, three of them on a homer. Right back to Capuano. There's one. And a 1 4 3 double play. Capuano did that textbook style. Turn, fired towards the bag. Hit Stephen Drew. Looked like he hit him right in the W in the New York on his shirt. Here's Travis Snyder, who is one for three. Last time up, an RBI single. We'll take that, he's one for four. Fly ball, shallow left. Chris Young makes the play. And that'll do it here in the eighth. No runs to hit, no errors. And because of the DP, nobody left. We go to the ninth, 11 3 0s.
Yankees Baseball on Yes is brought to you in part by Heineken. Open your world. Buy your Tri Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2015 models. And by Remax. Nobody sells more real estate than Remax. All right, we go to the ninth inning. A uh, new pitcher for the Orioles, it's Brad Brock. And the Orioles with an 11 3 lead over the Yankees. Twenty second game for Brock. Thirty seven strikeouts in twenty nine innings. Steve Pierce is the new first baseman. David Lowe takes over in center field. Brendan Ryan with a foul ball. Unless there's a rally of monumental proportions for the Yankees here in the ninth inning, this is one of those games you want to forget quickly. Just turn the page, come back tomorrow night, and try it again. You know, Kenny, if you look at the history of Michael Pineda with six days or more rest, yeah. it's not very good. But it's hard to really second guess what they did. If you continue to run him out there in a regular rotation, there's no certainty. The guy's had major shoulder surgery. Yeah. If he could hold up 220 innings, the Yankees do not want to risk that. So if they lose a game out of it, you know, it's something that they don't want. But if they keep this guy healthy, that's probably the most important thing. It's a big picture sort of thing. And, yep. and also, you know, maybe that applies to all pitchers, Mike. You know, maybe every once in a while, one turn through the rotation, you get, you get some time off. I mean, with this rash of uh, injuries to pitchers, that's been going on, you know, it's like an epidemic throughout baseball. Maybe that's something that should be thought about in the future. You know, just... No matter how well you're doing, it's your turn to sit out. Fly ball right field. Snyder's there for the first out. Here's A Rod. Two hits tonight, so he is six away from 3,000. Picked up a ribby as well. And he's one ribby away from 2,000. That doesn't take a math degree to say that's averaging 100 ribbies for 20 years. Yeah. And that means you started your career at a very young age. A-Rod jumped in when he was 19 years old. Back in the days at the Kingdom. Surrounded by hitters like Ken Griffey Jr., Jay Buhner. Why the heck did he trade Jay Buhner? <laughs> <laughs> There's a swing and a miss on an off speed pitch. And the Yankees are down to their last out. That's going to bring up Garrett Jones. In this spot, to sure it was two for four tonight. And Brock deals up and away. I forgot Edgar Martinez. You can't forget him. Mariano does it. No. <laughs> what do you say? He's the toughest hitter you ever yep. faced. Yep. Yeah. One and one. There's Ubaldo Menace. 
He worked the first five. He would get, would get the win. Jump his record over a, a 500. We'll go to four and three. And Pineda would go seven and three. Yankees down to their final strike. And the pitch. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. It's 11 3. O's over the Yanks. First game of a three game weekend set here in Baltimore. Brock did work in last night's game here against Boston. He went an inning in the third. Well, he's working back to back games. It'll probably mean you won't see him tomorrow night. In case the Orioles have to go to the bullpen. Swing and a miss. And that ends the night as the Yankees lose this.